Hello, ladies. How are you doing today? Hello. 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 Good, good, good. Y'all are all looking really beautiful tonight. There is a little delay, so I'm just letting you know for some reason when we have multiple people, there is a little delay. So excuse me if um, I might seem like I'm talking over you. I promise you I'm not. How's everyone doing tonight? All great. great. Good, 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 good. So what I am going to do, since we do not have our um, our artist spotlight on right now, um, what I'm going to do is we are just really going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, our format for the night is usually our artist spotlight, and then we do a business spotlight. We go into our main episode topic, and then we end with our um, our business spotlight and our uh, juice of the week. So please stay on for the whole time. Unless you have an emergency, please let me know in um, Messenger if you have an emergency you need to leave. But otherwise than that, I'm ready to get going. I'm so happy to have all of you here. Um, my co-host tonight is Miss Lucretia. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kind of a round table for everybody to introduce themselves. So, Miss Lucretia, it is on you, sweetheart. Please introduce yourself. Tell us about your business, and um, we're going to get going. Hello, everyone. Can y'all hear me? Good evening. I'm Lucretia Thomas. Can y'all still hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear. So my name is Lucretia Thomas. I am a money coach, a life insurance agent. I am a speaker, an author, and I am the CEO of Cullen and Credit Repair Company. Very nice. Thank you, Ms. Lucretia. Thank you for coming yes. on tonight. Um, Lucretia is also on the, um, the PR team as well as our, um, our finance coach expert. So thank you, Ms. Lucretia, for, um, for uh, co-facilitating tonight. Um, this stuff is running kind of slow, so please excuse me. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, so um, next up we have Ms. Angela Brand, can you tell us about you and what you do, your business, and all that good stuff? Well, my name is Angela Brand of Angela Brand Enterprise, where I train female, purpose minded women to share their mess as their message that will help position them to make millions and reach millions by providing the training of the FIRE method. Um, it's helping them to speak in their feminine energy, their impact, their riches, and showing up extraordinary. And as a result of that, women are able to travel the world, make an impact, and share their story by transforming the lives of others. Thank you so much, Ms. Angela. And I'm sorry, I wanna back up. Ms. Lakisha, um, you have a guest on with us tonight. We can't hear you. Can you guys hear anything? No. No, I was telling her I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Get out or hey. something. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Erica. <laughs> okay, everyone. For okay. some reason, my um, my, um, my volume on my tablet is not picking up on me. So, Miss Lucretia, if you can go ahead and introduce your guest for tonight, please. Can you hear me? Because it's echoing a little bit. Is it echoing? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. 
My guest for tonight is Miss Floyd. She is the owner of the Pillar CLT. I brought her on tonight. Um, she's just been rocking with me for a very, very, very long time. A very long time. Um, a very long time. I've almost been in Charlotte a couple months of me, 10 years. And I literally met her. I don't even know if it was probably seven, eight years, but she was with me um, celebrating my launch of Couture Cupcakes because that was part of my prior story, um, bacon at first. And we've been rocking for a very, very, very long time. So I wanted to bring her on and give her um, this space to definitely connect and um, talk about her business as well. Thank you so much. Good evening. Hi, my name is Claire Sean. Um, I own the Pillar Celebration. I am a paper crafter, so I make custom party supplies, and which can include, uh, but definitely is not limited to, cupcake toppers, cake toppers, treat boxes, banners, different things like that. I actually have a few things in front of me um, uh, as well as pertains to that it really can run the gamut. So if you think of anything paper that you would um, find at a party or even some other materials actually I dabble in, which I'll be launching in the fourth quarter, which hopefully if we get into that conversation, I'd love to share with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Miss Floyd. Um, can't hear you again. Okay, so Lucretia, I'm going to let you continue while I'm trying to fix what's going on over here. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll go back um, a little bit. My name is Lucretia Thomas. I um, teach women in business how to dominate mindset and money. Um, so essentially, my journey is, you know, probably 11 years ago. Um, starting in business, literally vegan, that Thomas Floyd and I met. And um, she's super awesome. Never switched up. We always, it's very rare to um, connect with women or come across women, um, not just in business, but in general, built relationships as well for so long. And we always was always about collaborating, helping each other do things and just like minds connecting. Um, she's very amazing at what she do. And I wanted to give her the opportunity because we have to turn around and reach a hand back. <clears throat> that's, that's what it's about for me. Thank you so much, Ms. Lucretia. Ms. Angela, can you please introduce your guest tonight? Yes. So I have this amazing, amazing, beautiful soul, Jolie Rashawn, what we call Jolie the Great. She is from Dallas, Texas. She is making major moves in this world with her tour, Stepping Your Truth. I'm so very proud. And she was the very first person that I thought of to share this platform. Jolie Rashawn. Hello, ladies. It is such an honor and pleasure to be on this platform with you all. Um, thank you, Angela, for thinking of me. Um, like she said, my name is Jolie Rashawn, known as Jolie the Great. And not to be boastful, but I'm great because I know the great one that's inside of me and what he has given me to share with the world. Um, I am the world's number one truth expert. Um, like she said, I do have a my own platform, Step In Your Truth Tour, that I am taking worldwide to touch the lives of not just women, but men as well, to help them be their authentic self and become comfortable with walking in their truth. It is nothing wrong with being the amazing person that God made you to be. We just sometimes need someone to help us to see that. So I'm also a best-selling author, a international speaker, a podcaster, among Again, 
Thank you, Ms. Jolie, for coming on. Really, really appreciate you. Um, next up, one of our main guests um, is Dr. Erica McKnight. I'm excited to meet you. Came highly recommended from one of our other team members. So you are up, young lady. Please tell us about you and what you do. Oh, thank you so very much for having me on tonight. I just want to say good evening to everyone. If I seem a little off, it's because I just got back from Vegas. So I'm just, I'm trying to get my self acclimated here. <laughs> You know what, what, as they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. No, I'm just kidding. But at any rate, <laughs> my name is Dr. Erica L. McKnight, and I am the owner of ELM School of Real Estate. I'm also the owner of ELM Realty. I have been in the real estate industry, I can't believe it, for over 20 years. I, as well, am an 18-time best-selling author, international, and I travel the world teaching people how to create generational wealth. Um, throughout their family. Also, we teach people how to buy and sell, et cetera, et cetera. But my school in general, we help you obtain your real estate license. And if you already have a real estate license, um, we help you to maintain that license by providing that continuing education for you as well. We are located in all of the Carolinas and in multiple states. Um, I stopped counting a long time ago as far as where we teach and train. And then we are also internationally. So we are now in the Dominican Republic and San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I'm very excited about that because if anyone knows about um, domestic, meaning internationally, how to get your license and things you need to put in place in order to be compliant, it is a lot of work. But when you put God in it, there's nothing that's impossible. And so with that being said, I want to introduce my wonderful guest on tonight. And she was also just like um, Angela, I believe her name is said that um, the young lady she thought of first, Tammy is the first person that I thought of. And the reason why is because she has such a gentle spirit. She's such a humble person, but has just has a big heart and a very um, is very compassionate about the mortgage industry. So she is one of my go-to, if not the only one mortgage lender here in the Carolinas. And she's also licensed several places as well, but we've been business partners. I believe now, um, Tammy, you can correct me, but I believe we've been business partners now for over, I wanna say eight or nine years. And we work together um, to create generational wealth all the people that we encounter on a regular, whether that's real estate agents or uh, just people who are looking to buy or sell a home. And she is phenomenal. I'm so glad she's here. She can attest to all of the success that not only I've had, but that we've had together. And so I'm so glad that she is on um, this podcast on tonight. And I just thank you so very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Erica. That was wonderful. I can't believe it's been eight years. Um, but um, I'm Tammy Stowe. I'm a senior mortgage banker with Atlantic Bay Mortgage Group. I've actually been in the business since 2004. Um, I've been with Atlantic Bay for the last six, excuse me, the last six years. Um, it's a crazy market right now, guys. Um, my goal is to make sure that I bring that dream of home ownership to everyone that I possibly can. Um, Lakeisha, we've got to talk uh, when you mentioned credit repair and things like that. We'd really like to meet you um, so that you can help me with some of my other clients. Um, but just super honored to be a part of this. Erica, you know, you are the bomb. Um, <laughs> It is just amazing. Um, we host CE classes together and when the class is over, everybody sings her praises. I cannot say enough about what a wonderful woman she is. Um, and she has actually helped me grow my business by introducing me to other realtors and the sort. So um, thank you, Miss Erica. And thank you ladies for having me this evening. Thank you, hon. I really, really appreciate y'all coming on. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal panel tonight, and I'm delighted to meet all of you ladies. Um, several of you have been very um, influential 
um, as uh, me following most of you, but um, I have been able to have the honor of um, being able to connect with Lakeisha on more than one occasion. Um, Angela as well, I've been following her with her fire score and coaching other women, which is amazing. Um, so um, I'm, just, I'm just so grateful for everybody for being on and taking the time tonight. Um, our artist spotlight is on tonight, which is Miss Stars 10. So please, please introduce yourself, young lady. And uh, tell us about you and the spotlight is on you tonight. Oh, uh, hi, Tiff. Finally made it. <laughs> I am so sorry. I was late. I was just on another show. Um, I, was, I had the opportunity to do. So I'm so glad to be here with you ladies as well. Thank you for having me. Um, I am Star. I am like 10 different people at 10 different times. I'm a writer, I'm a model, I'm a domestic violence advocate. I am a yoga instructor. I have a full-time job at the school system where I teach during the day. So I do a lot of things. Motivation and uplifting is my biggest um, thing. So that's that's pretty much what I do. I'm also a spoken word artist. So I guess that's why I'm the artist spotlight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what, tell us, what would you like to share with us tonight for our artist spotlight? Um, did you want me to do a piece? I don't know if this is the right crowd for this piece. <laughs> Um, that's, that's going to be totally up to you. Let me see. I can do uh, a little, I can do a little piece for you. Um, this one is kind of close to my heart. Some of you guys probably have heard it. If you're on my social media, we posted the video. Um, so I'll go for it. <laughs> God made us in his likeness. They told us that we all realized Jesus was kind of brown, like Rose on that bus. Your perilous fight. The rampants you watching, I don't want to curse Tiff. If you want me to do it clean or you want me to do it how I do it? Tiffany. God made us in his likeness, they told us. So we all realized Jesus was kind of brown like Rose on that bus. Your perilous fight, the rampants you watching, fuck you and your stolen blood stained cotton. Land of the free. Seriously, more like the land you yourself arrived on mysteriously, suddenly walking around here like you're supposed to be in charge of me, creating an atmosphere where only the wicked seem to be free, yet home of the brave, where you consistently attempt to usher me to my grave. Land of the free, you say, the one built on the back of a slave. But Francis Scott Key, he even had an idea of what you thought we'd forever be. He even wrote this fucked up song dehumanizing me. So make your flag bleed, I say. I'd rather be on my feet today, armed in the streets today, protecting mine from harm by all means necessary. Like Malcolm and Huey. They was with the shits in their day. So I'd rather be in the trenches at war every day than like George Floyd under Derek's knee that way. Brianna didn't even get a say. Tamir and Trayvon wouldn't even see their 18th birthdays. But you say land of the free, yet you don't even see me. Home of the brave, you've yet to see that day. Oh, say, can you see? Yeah, I see you too small to see me. I see you're too afraid to treat me with the respect derived from my royal history. Dawn's early light was my ancestors' greatest plight, wishing and praying they just die through the night. Hell of a sacrifice to want to give your own life just to avoid a fight. Hell, Dawn felt like doing to us, picking cotton with massa behind us, steady trying to bust dumping his trash all over my ancestors' asses. Oh, so sadly they wailed at the everlasting beatings, the stained blood's red glare. My brother's dead bodies bursting and swinging like your misrepresented ass flag through the air. It gave proof, all right, through every night. Your flag represents despair. Yet to this day, you dare to reject our stare. Don't look you in your eyes. The fuck you mean? Well, it's no surprise you fear going toe to toe with us kings and queens. It was the mirror to your soul. That's what you wanted hidden from me. So don't look you in your eyes because you know what I see? The truth staring through a threat in you. Why are you so afraid of me? Oh, say, can you see that star for visibility? The one my father shined across the sea for a brighter journey to guide my brothers and sisters through those haunting nights. It was a beacon in assisting them in taking flight. Some like Moses, when the water rolled up on both sides, he was lending soldiers for the fight. 
Go here to them Harriet's, Coretta's, and Lewis's, putting in work many nights. Oh, the road that they paved. So damn your fucking banner that yet waves. See, land of the free, more like land that hates me. My sexy brown royalty, my truth, embedded from the souls of those that rose, then those before me. Well, we are the fucking brave. Hundreds of years of this shit. So now we wave your right to our thrones. You take your ass home. Land of the what? Wanna fight with me. The land of the free. Cause I'm taking a knee. Well, I stand on the fact that you'll never wrong me. Shout out to Generation Z for willingly accepting the mini 14 baton from me. Land of the free. Are you kidding me? Well, you can lie to yourself about times being changed, but inevitably when my ancestors spirits finally raise, yeah, they here, it's just dust in them graves. It's gonna be hell to pay. And that stare that you feared, us looking you in your face, when my soldiers take place, they'll look you dead in your eyes and I smile as I watch you choke on your own demise and be laid to rest on that same banner that y'all like waving and shit. You know, the one that bleeds when it reads, we own slaves. So today, I pledge allegiance to our past. Fuck these United States of oppression and to your racist ass republic that prepared us for war. You were warned, rest assured, because this bullshit can't happen no more. Now, I don't necessarily mean this in the literal sense, but even you must admit that your reckless, inhumane ass behavior warrants our defense. One nation where my neck's under a knee. You know, like the one Colin took to represent unity. Oh, but we free. Sounds more like divisibility to me. We don't get liberty. We get hung from trees. We don't get justice. We get bullets while we dream. So to hell with your allegiance. We welcome the amended fight. We demand you honor those words you so boldly dare to write. For action you call, huh? A45. Don't just stand by you and your boys stand proud and tall. And we dare you to submit to our God-given right to your misguided, misconstrued, bullshit-ass lie about liberty and justice from every mountainside. Well, let freedom ring. Wow. Sorry about the curse. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. How do you remember all that? Goodness gracious. <laughs> I wrote it, wow, I wrote it for so long at so many different places. So I, I know that on my heart. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much. How can we find you, Stars? Oh, you can Google me. The easiest way to find all my business is to Google Stars Pen. So it's S-T-A-R-Z-P-E-N. Or you can hit up Amazon, you know, get my book. And that's what that's looking like. <laughs> And that you can search Stars Pen for everything. I am the Submissive Alpha on Instagram and Radia Johnson on Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so appreciative of you of coming on and sharing your talents with us. Ladies, ladies, ladies. I have you on tonight because you are all boss women. Right. So tell us um, how is it? Anyone, anyone can speak up. Tell us um, what you did before you started your business and what made you start your own business. And feel free, anybody can talk. Oh, well, I'll go, I guess, since I didn't ran my mouth for five minutes. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> I had, well, you, Tiffany, you know a little bit of my story. I, most of my, um, I guess, eye-opening energy came through when I got myself out of a domestic violence relationship. And I think that's when I really started to come into my purpose and not be afraid of the things that I wanted to say and the things that I wanted to do. Um, so probably about 2013 is when I started just about everything that I do now. Um, of course, the nonprofit for domestic violence was my first way to kind of give back and reach back to some ladies. But yeah, so I just kind of, I just kind of went for it. I'll say it that way um, because I was, in that hole for so long so i had to pull myself out and i found the things that that made me happy even doing yoga my writing those things that i had to surround myself with to kind of become who i am today very nice and i heard you speak about being able to help other other women so tell us about your um your nonprofit and what your services are for other women or well i have domestic violence um i'm an advocate and i have my sister's dreamer domestic violence support center and we get a lot of calls, middle of the night, um, 
we get a lot of calls for people needing clothes. So I'm just that girl that people know to call around town if there's some ladies in danger or if anybody needs anything. Um, I think I became that crutch for them because I never had that. So I, I kind of went through my domestic violence literally by myself. And that's okay if we have to do that. But it's, it was, I think I had to do that so it would make me want to reach back because now I know what that feels like. So when I look at these ladies and they, they just have nobody to call, you know, it's, that's rough. So just being able to say, um, you know, it's going to be okay, sometimes made a big difference in a lot of my clients. So, so yeah, yeah, you can call yeah. up. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I'm sorry. And before you came on, I did say that there was a little delay. So if it sounds like I'm cutting you off, I'm sorry. Miss um, Lucretia, tell, tell us what you were doing before you started your business and what made you decide to go into business? Oh, man, it's been a journey, Tiffany. It's been a journey. Um, I was, <laughs> yeah, it's been a journey. Um, so, yeah, literally, I was, um, I think probably like around, um, probably like 2009 or something like that. I had lost my godmother that was raising me and didn't have um, a relationship with my mother. So always been in therapy for a real long time. But I'm, you know, I'm from Philly. I grew up in the hood. So I was looking for that new cap income, you know, with the nursing school and did the healthcare thing. The office environment just wasn't me. So I just took it to the streets doing what I knew how to do. Um, a couple of people in my city was, you know, doing entrepreneurial things, you know, selling T-shirts and so forth. So I was like, you know what? I know how to bake. I'm going to do what I know how to do. And I, I did it on my free time, like literally selling cupcakes out the trunk of my car, uh, vending, you know, five dollars for one cupcake. <laughs> it's been an amazing wow. journey. I'm super grateful. Um, and then. Fast forward 2013, coming to Charlotte, I hit my rock bottom year 2015. So that's essentially how I got into the finance industry. Um, the reason that I love and I'm so passionate in teaching women how to dominate mindset and money is because I mastered that in my rock bottom year. And I'm, I guess I'm grateful to say it was one year. People are like, what? You know, that's not everybody's rock bottom is different. But um, I mastered mindset and money um, going through what I had to go through personally. And I was like, you know what? Hey, nobody's talking about this. You know, everybody's chasing the money. Everybody want all of these things. And people can teach you blueprint to business, right? Teach you a seven, eight figure strategy. But nobody's really talking about the mindset part of it. Um, and, and I believe that money is energy. I believe that with lots and lots of self-development, you'll align and track and manifest anything you want in your life. So that's why the money, the mindset and the money is super, um, super, super important to me because it's what I personally um, got through on my own. Like I didn't <laughs> decide to do it because it was a thing. It was like, yo, I'm a girl that got through this. It's crazy getting out there. How many women is low key struggling? got so many things going on, but they still just focus on the money because life is consistently happening. So uh, yeah, that was, that's, that's how I got here. I went from bacon to finance. So, and everything else just became about um, on a journey. I'm super grateful to be able to help the amount of women um, everywhere. So it's, it, it's been a journey I, and I'm, blessed enough to you know have the confidence to put myself on the forefront like hey you're not the only one and i think that's what a lot of women need to hear um that first and foremost to give them a, a piece of hope right and then help them along the way uh, with strategy and game plan yeah yes um yes you have definitely um helped me with um trying to uh, put some things in order. Um, and I definitely appreciate that. Um, because hopefully within the next two years, depending on this market, I would like to buy a house. <laughs> um, so we are definitely, yeah, yeah. So I'm actually, um, working on episodes of buying a house, um, kind of having a real estate platform. Um, so we will definitely be talking this, uh, Erica and this Tammy, um, Tammy, um, so that we can put that together. Um, I think it's really important, especially with the um, 
the state of the real estate market right now that we really need to talk about it um, to people um, and, you know, kind of kind of help people out a little bit while still, you know, letting people know what your services are in the, in the same way. So um, thank you, Ms. Lucretia. Uh, Ms. Angela, tell us what were you doing before you started your business and um, what made you decide to go this route? Like what, what, what got your fire burning, Ms. Angela? <laughs> Oh, Lord, where can I start? <laughs> I actually always had the gift to empower women since I was a teenager. So I've always done that part of it. I'm going into ministry years ago, empowering women, pastoring and all those things in leadership of the church. I went through a season to where I started crying out to God. I was tired. I was tired of leading while bleeding. I was tired of preaching while bleeding. So I ended up closing my church down in 2016 and I moved to Charlotte. That started my healing journey. That started, got really maturing me in areas I wasn't maturing. It took me to a journey of focusing on the personal growth and development and how I see myself and redefining what my purpose is outside of what other people think I should do, outside of other people's opinions. And within that time of me getting the coaching and the therapy, I took a life coaching certification course and she kind of suggested, hey, you can start your own coaching training. And I'm like, hmm, okay, you can really start a business doing this. So I took my mm -hmm. ministerial skills, my corporate training skills, and I developed the sort of um, certification to become a life coach. So women were wanting to start speaking. So I started the motivational speaking certification. Then they started saying, well, where are we going to speak? Then I started the tour as a platform for them to launch their business. Then they say, well, I need websites. I need branding because of my all those skills and different talents. I created a one stop shop in my business. So I would train them for coaches, speaking, brand them and help them launch their business with the tour which is called the Queen and Takeover Tool in 2018. Then I rebranded the tour last year along with the training. And now it's the Her Fire Tour and AV Fire Coaching and Speaking Academy. So I kind of just took what God naturally gave me to aid a business and help other women take what God naturally gave them, their experiences, their trials, their stories, and make, um, they became coaching speakers, and that's where we are today. Very nice, very nice. Um, I have I've been following you for a couple of years, and kind of seeing your your fire tours and those that you're coaching, and how successful that the women are, and how happy they are with um, the coaching that you have uh, provided for them. Um, and I just think you have an amazing influence on women and it's something that you should definitely um be, be proud of definitely so thank you so much for being a coach for other women um because <laughs> we need it we need it you know it's it's yes. a lot of people say you know that women need to support women um but also giving back to the community is really important and so that's what we're talking about tonight is helping each other build and grow and you are definitely doing that you are definitely doing that thank you so um, I think this is a good. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I think this is a good place for us to bring our business spotlight. So, Miss Clarissa, um, we talked all about how you know we had that story before we started our businesses and helping other women. So, Miss Clarissa is our business spotlight tonight, um, and she's the founder of Renewed Inspiration, and she helps young ladies um, before they become women. Um, so, Ms. Clarissa, could you please share your um, your nonprofit organization and what it is that you do for young ladies? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Clarissa Byers, um, as she stated, founder of Renewed Inspiration. Um, my goal is really to empower um, young girls to live healthy lifestyles. Um, our main focus is um, educating girls on the importance of um, self-care, um, confidence building, um, eating healthy. Um, we currently um, have a 
um, healthy meal prep program that we have. Um, a chef comes in and teaches um, the girls how to um, prepare healthy meals um, and just educating on them with the importance of healthy eating. Um, also, we um, do um, enrichment workshops where we um, focus on self-care. Um, this past year, we have um, partnered with um, Southview Recreation Center um, to implement our program there um, for disadvantaged girls um, in the Renaissance and Little Rock Apartments um, community. And um, we also have a, a outreach component of our organization where uh, we give out uh, free food um, every Saturday um, to the um, community, the Reed Park community, um, and also the Renaissance community um, as well. And so um, I've been, um, I started the program in 2015 um, when I actually started doing the workshops. Um, I really um, began, well, got this vision and passion after working um, in the school system for um, a short period of time, um, assisting, substituting, and um, I was a tutor in the AVID program. And I just felt like um, I wanted to be more hands-on and extend my reach in a greater way. So I um, started the organization. Okay. Uh, I've had the honor of working with you and your organization um, more than once and really looking forward to coming out and speaking to your young ladies um, next month about domestic violence and dating violence, intimate partner violence. So I think it's really important that we, um, you know, we really educate our young ladies um, and even our young men about you know, dating violence, intimate partner violence, domestic violence, sexual assault, and so forth. Um, but also just really appreciate what you do for the for the community and the young women in our community, preparing them for womanhood and preparing them for careers. Um, so I definitely say to our ladies that are on tonight, please reach out to Ms. Carissa um, because you definitely would be a great um, a great mentor for the young ladies that she serves under renewed inspiration. So if you have the opportunity to do some volunteer hours or some community work, I highly, highly recommend um, Renewed Inspiration um, to give some of your time to. Um, Ms. Clarissa, can you tell us how to get in contact with you and what are your current needs right now for um, Renewed Inspiration? Yes, yeah, so um, you, I can be reached on uh, Facebook, Renewed Inspiration, Instagram at Renewed Inspiration, um, also my website, um, RenewedInspiration.org. Um, Currently, um, we are still recruiting more girls because I had a lot of girls to transition to college. So if you um, know any girls in the Reed Park, West Charlotte area, um, please um, reach out to me. I would love to connect with them. Awesome, awesome. I definitely, um, just being out in the community, will be looking out for some, some young ladies, and I'm going to connect you with someone as well that has an organization in that area. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Clarissa, for coming on and sharing your business spotlight for um, Renewed Inspiration. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You can stay on if you like. Um, that's, that's up to you. Um, Ms. Uh, Erica, Dr. Erica, I love the title, Dr. Erica. Oh, goodness, that's such an, an accomplishment. Um, tell us, what did you do before um, getting into real estate and what made you get in? You touched on it briefly, but I would like to talk about it a little bit more. <laughs> we can't hear you, Ms. Erica. Sorry. <laughs> so um, I went to grad school for nursing. And while I was in college, my undergrad for nursing, 
I went ahead and purchased my very first property. And so I, I purchased my very first property. Um, I was only 18 at the time. I had solicited family and friends for some money. They were selling some cheap row houses, we call them, in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. But um, so in Baltimore, Maryland, they were selling these row houses and they were so inexpensive. They were only $500. And so I went to all my family and said, listen, I need to reach $500. And so I said, I want to buy um, one of these row houses. So the next thing I, I knew, I had more than that. I had 1500. So I said, wait a minute, I could buy three. And so I, I had no idea that I had no real estate license. All I knew is that these were very inexpensive houses and I was at the age to where I could purchase them. And I knew that real estate was the vehicle and is one of the, I would say under five, one of the top five things that you can do to make money while you sleep in. And definitely one of them. And so at any rate, fast forward after um, I had my children, I have three beautiful, beautiful children and I was married for over two decades, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, in doing so, I was a stay at home mom and then we sold our home in Maryland. So at the time, you know, I had the three row houses. We sold our home in Maryland. I had graduated from undergrad school. And so I was just so excited about real estate. So at that time, the real estate agent that sold our home was like, oh my goodness, I, you need to get your real estate license when you get to North Carolina. And she said, I am going to pay for you to go to class. And she said, you got to get your license. She said, because basically you sold this house on your own. And I was just like, well, I just helped out a little bit. I just had a knack for it, I guess. And so at any rate, once I got to North Carolina and um, I had a bad experience with a buyer's agent, um, I said, oh, Okay. I was like, okay, God, you're speaking. So this will never happen to anyone else because we were a young couple at the time when I was married. Um, we were a young couple, three kids under the age of five years old. It was bananas that we even picked up and moved, but I knew North Carolina was it. And so at any rate, um, upon doing so, I got my real estate license. And after that, the rest was history. But what I do know now is that you start with one thing and the seed was the $500. Okay. And as of today, I've kind of, I, you know, I, I've outnumbered that numbers in masses, but I say that to say that when you're thinking about how you're going to provide for your family, because my whole thing was at the time I had a very good husband. Um, I mean, he's, he's still a good guy. I'm not married anymore, but a very good mm -hmm. husband. He was a great provider. We're still good friends. Um, and, and, um, yeah, I got one baby daddy, you know, I'm only playing, <laughs> you know, you can add some, <laughs> add some humor to this, you know what I mean? But at any rate, uh, so he was, you know, so he was my motivator and he said, oh, I'm going to buy your signs. And we were still married, obviously I'm going to do this. So I had the people and I had the support that believed in what I saw and, and believed in the vision. And as a result, the real estate agent in Maryland, she kept her word and then my ex-husband, he sold his seeds. And as as we grew in the real estate business, that's when I had agent up under me. And then that is when I decided to open up the school because people had said, oh my goodness, you have so much knowledge, you have so much information. And so as I'm doing all of that, that good chaos, I call it, as I'm doing all of that, raising as we're raising a young family, I decided to go back to school. And so I went back and got my degree in education and entrepreneurial leadership. And as a result, I teach at some of the colleges as a professor to their um, graduate business graduates um, and programs and different things like that, in addition to doing real estate. But what I do know is that if you find yourself in a place to where you just don't know what to do, I say, follow your gut. OK, and that's what I did. I follow my gut. And I always tell people when I train and travel around the world, I got tired of being tired. And let me explain what I mean by that really quickly, meaning that I got tired of saying this is what I have or this is all I have. What am I going to do now? I got tired of that tagline or that storyline. So real estate gave me the vehicle and it was the pathway to write my own paycheck. And I have done that for over 20 something years. And when I say write my own paycheck, there is nothing I believe at this point that I can't have. And when you pour into people, because someone poured into me, 
and someone gave me a chance and someone gave me an opportunity. So this is what I do on a regular is I pour into other people and I teach them generational wealth. So let me end by saying this, because, you know, as being a professor, we could talk all day. But <laughs> let me end by saying this: those three roll houses. I want to I want to tell everybody this and and kind of put this out there is that those three row houses, as I grew in the real estate business, they were there, but they were also not current. I wasn't thinking about it anymore because I was doing other things in real estate. But as they, as the economy grew, those same houses that were worth five, that I paid $500 for are now worth $750,000. So you cannot do the math in real estate when you buy at the time, perfect location and where you need to buy. And so that's the generational wealth that is separate that will pour into my children and my children's children and their generations to come. Uh, well, with a portfolio of other properties as well and stuff like that. But um, I tell people all the time, you know, you just got to stay in your lane, stay where you're gifted and try not to get distracted what everyone else is doing because you have a uniqueness. My my gift, there's a lot of real estate agents, and of course, you know, I know plenty of them, but we all have something unique. We all have a knack. We all have an experience at a certain level that where we're giving it to people that we service a different group, even though there's so many of us. So I always tell people, stay in your lane, stay, don't get distracted, stick to the course that's meant for you because no one's like you. That's why we all have different fingerprints. This is why we all look different because we have something to give. But when you're trying to copy and you're trying to mimic or do or be a duplicate of someone else, then you've just missed the mark of what God has for you to do. And then you don't. And then everybody loves the story. They love the glory, but they don't want to know the story behind all of it. They want to skip all of that. So at any rate, that's how I got into it. And everybody says, oh, you know, are you ever going to retire from that? I'm not that old, but you never retire from <laughs> I'm going to speak for myself. You never retire from real estate. Because guess what? I work when I get ready. I'm the boss. I employ other people. And this is what I do full time. This is not something that I just wake up every day and just, you know, OK, you know, I, I get to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I get to inspire other people along the way as I do it. And that's what's important about what you do. If you don't have if you're not passionate about it, if you're not happy to get up in the morning or go to bed at night ready for the next day and what you're doing, then you may want to rethink what you're doing. Then. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. And actually, my daughter is cooking. It's her night to cook. And uh, I, I hope she just heard everything you just said, because I like that about not being a duplicate and kind of, you know, going after your passions and, and what you love. Those are some of the things that I've said to her as well. Um, but yeah, I can tell the passion. I can tell the passion in your voice and, you know, you telling us about how you got started. Um, I've always been interested in real estate and just never made the time to actually do it. I passed the test in Maryland and then I decided to move to North Carolina and never went back and got my license. So um, I've always loved the real estate um, industry. I'm a social worker and just never got the chance. So I did start talking to you about, you know, hey, do they have online classes? Do they have this? So us busy professionals that would like to get into real estate can get into it um, without having to go to a classroom. So definitely we'll follow up with you on that conversation and we will definitely get together for another episode and talk about real estate and especially in today's world. Um, yeah. This Tammy, uh, tell us how you got started. I did read your bio on your website and it was pretty interesting how you got started. So please tell us how you got started and, and what, what made you, um, for those that do not know, um, start your own. I, you did say Tammy, correct? I did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I actually <laughs> worked in uh, retail for 22 years. Um, I actually helped um, several of the executives there write their speeches and do presentations for them. And during that time frame, there would be times where I would schedule vacations. I would want to take time off and I would schedule it. And then they would go, uh, we need you to do this. So I would basically have to cancel my vacations. I wouldn't be able to go where I wanted to go, do what I wanted to do. 
And at the time, my husband was in mortgages. And I told him, I was like, I would really love to do something one day, you know, that I could earn the money myself, do what I love to do, but have my own time. So he's like, well, why don't you come work with me? So I worked with him for two months. Um, he basically taught me everything I know. And at that time, I turned in my notice and started this in 2004. Um, from that, I have been the top um, mortgage professional here in the Carolina regions for the past six years. Um, that was with Atlantic Bay. I was the top regional and out of Virginia Beach uh, with Town and Monarch Bank for four years in a row with that. Um, wow. But the thing about my business is it's not about me. It's about seeing that smile on my client's face when they've closed on their dream home. Um, and I'm not the loan officer that only wants the easy loans. Um, I have a reputation for being the fixer um, because I think everyone deserves a home. Um, it is not a pile of bricks. It is a place where people build their memories. It's where they raise their families. It is probably one of the most emotional <laughs> experiences people will ever go through. And I try to be there from beginning to end, 24 seven, if that's what it takes. And in this industry, things come up. Sometimes things will happen. Underwriters come back and say, no, well, if you tell me no, I will dig to the end of the earth to find the yes, to make sure that we put you in that home. Um, so it, it, I definitely, when people say that they found their niche, I found my niche and my dream because I love helping people. That is, that is what makes me happy. Nice. Nice. I love that so much. I love that so much. Um, being a social worker, I can share that uh, that feeling of, you know, getting a family that maybe was homeless into a new home or, you know, finding jobs or something like that. So I can definitely understand um, that feeling of getting someone in a home for their families and just seeing those piles on the face, especially the kids, you know, having being able to drive up to their new home and say, oh, this is my house. Um, I, I, yes, that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I, we're, we have like a little pattern going on here right now. I'll talk about it a little bit, but we have a pattern going on with us ladies right now. Um, okay, so uh, Miss Jolie, tell us how, how you, well, what were you doing pre what you do now and um, what made you start your business? Hello. So, um, I only go back to about 2012. Um, I went through a really bad divorce, which sent me into a, um, I didn't know it at the time, but into a depression. I, you know, developed anxiety and all these different things that put me on medication. And I didn't realize how severe it was until just one day I was sitting there and I started thinking about how great my children would be better off if I wasn't here. And the thoughts started coming a little more frequent. And so um, I made the decision. I said, I'm not going to take this medication anymore. And an opportunity came for me to dance at a fashion show. I was like, okay, this is something to do. Get my mind off of what I'm, I'm dealing with. Um, However, the door was opened and I was introduced into modeling. And so I got into modeling and that was my escape to help me to build my confidence back up because I had low self-esteem. I thought everyone looked, thought, learned whatever better than I did. And so um, being in, in those relationships had contributed to me thinking less than myself. And so getting into modeling, I was in that, still currently in that, but I was full-fledged in it. 
and um, in 2017, in 2015, my mom was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And so I took a break from that to make sure she was good and all of her surgeries and things. And then in 2017, my grandmother passed, who was my best friend. And so didn't realize I was kind of going back through the cycle of kind of the low depression. And so in the midst of that, I was introduced to Angela. And in, when I was in modeling, I used that time to just kind of encourage women, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, we can all do this, not knowing I'm already walking in my ministry that I'm, I'm getting set up for and not knowing it. So when I met Angela, um, she actually took me through my healing process, which she is, to me, she's Coach A.B. So it's, it's weird even saying Angela, <laughs> that's Coach A.B., when I was when I went through and she literally I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna get certified to speak. Let me I'm already encouraging people, let me just get this next thing under my belt. Not knowing she took me through my healing first. And in doing that, it gave me a better perspective of how to actually encourage and lift up someone else. So I was certified through um, AB Coaching Academy at the time in 2019. Um, I wrote my first book in, um, it was published in September of 2019, best-selling author. And then I, from there, it just kind of spiraled. You know, they tell you once you write one thing, you can't just stop there. It's like your creative juices start flowing. So I have been consistently writing, consistently speaking, um, not only on my coach's platform, but then I launched my own platform October of last year, which it started as the Boss Up Tour. However, um, sometimes we tend to do things to see what will catch people's attention instead of doing things in your authentic purpose. And so 2022, God said, yes, I told you to start the tour. That's not the name I gave you to start it with. And so when I changed the name to step in your tour, step in, step in your truth, everything fell into place. Like yes, I love it. when I say so many doors and avenues have opened because I was obedient and I was listening to what God was telling me. And I'm thankful for my coach because she doesn't, she never says, God told me to tell you, she says, let me tell you what I saw for you. And I already know, okay, let me, this is about to be confirmation of something I said, something I thought. So um, I'm grateful because um, there are a lot of things that are getting ready to be launched in the works. Um, just how she is coaching us with all of the women that are coming forth that want to be speakers on my platform. It is only right that I'm able to coach them as well and to train them on how to be their authentic selves. And the sad part about the whole thing is that society makes us so afraid to be our true selves. They make us afraid to say, I need help. They make us afraid to say, I'm battling with this. And it's, it's healthy for us. We didn't grow up in that in that mindset of getting counseling or getting coaching is healthy. If you got coaching, when I was growing up, that meant you were crazy, something was wrong with you, stay away from that family because something is wrong with all of them are crazy. And it's not, mm -hmm. it is actually healthy. And had I known then what I know now, I would have, I, look, I would have been looking for the ABs back then to help me, <laughs> You know with some of the traumas that i endured you know growing up so um i'm just gonna wherever god tells me to go um and i'm a firm believer in when you when you ask god for something be intentional and be careful what you ask for because he's going to give it to you i told god <laughs> i wanted a different audience and my facebook page was hacked december of last year so the complete audience of what people wanted from Jolie the Vixen is not the audience I have as Jolie the influencer, Jolie the speaker. 
And then I told God I wanted to travel the world and speak and empower. And then my husband got a part-time job at the airline. So it's like, okay, you have no excuse of why you can't do what I'm telling you to do. So I'm just a firm believer of how she said, if, if you, you follow your gut, you follow your heart, if it's in you to do it. And the one thing I always tell myself, if there was no money involved, would I still enjoy speaking and uplifting and pouring into my sister or my brother that I see in me? And the answer is yes. I cannot see myself doing anything else than what I am doing now. So again, I, I thank you guys for um, allowing me to share that. I love that. That was amazing. That was amazing. Um, I know on my blog, which I need to do more of, but on my blog, that was one of the reasons why I started um, the private room back up. Um, for, before the private room, I had the Speak Up and Inspire series podcast. It was very successful for two years, and it was a platform for community leaders, um, advocates, and so forth. But when I decided to kind of rebrand and do something different, it's because I wanted to be able to show my true self, my authentic self. Um, and I wanted to be able to not feel limited because of what other people perceive that I'm supposed to be or that I'm supposed to act or, you know, so forth and so on. And so one of the reasons why I started the private room is, and that's why I told um, Stars Pen earlier, to, no, I want you to read your poem or recite your poem the way you wrote it, the way you want it to be, because that was that that's the power in our in our work. So um, definitely appreciate that point about you know just being authentic to yourself, um, being true to yourself, um, and just making it an impact. Um, I think you make a big, bigger impact when you are being your authentic self and you're not trying to duplicate <laughs> someone else. Someone else. So um, yes, thank you for sharing that. That's that's a beautiful testimony. And you found love again, girl. I heard the husband in there. So you found love again, too, while you was at it. <laughs> yeah. Look, yes, I did. And I gave him such a hard time. But um, <laughs> I'm glad he did not run and leave. He stuck around. And he is definitely a support system for what I want to do. It's never, no, I don't think it's, hey, if that's what you want to do, let's run with it. So I, I'm grateful uh, for him. Good for him. Good for him. I'm, and I'm glad you have him as well. Miss um, Clarshawn, I, I see you're being very, very patient. Young, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being patient. We have a lot of amazing stories. Um, tell us um, what you were doing before you became the, uh, the paper queen and tell us why you decided to start. I'll be glad to. And I love hearing the stories. Um, I, I've definitely been enjoying hear most recently being able to connect with so many. You said you can't hear me? No. We can yes. hear. Oh, oh, okay, oh you I'm can sorry. hear? Okay, All right. So I've been really okay, appreciating sorry. recently sorry, connecting with ahead. a lot of <laughs> women in business. Um, but as far as how I started, I actually do still work my day job. I presently work for an investment firm. At the time that I started in the party industry was actually in 2013. I used to bake with two friends. At the time, we were working in food service. I always enjoyed baking, and they convinced me to start a baking company. And it was not the best decision because um, I realized it was so much it was so much more of a hobby and not necessarily a business, but I discovered what I do now within that. So I would bake, I was doing cupcakes and I might do a cupcake topper or two. And at the time, although there was an industry that a paper industry that was doing things, it wasn't super mainstream. It definitely wasn't in the area. And I just had this thought in my head, you know, it'll be really cool if the cupcake topper matched the cake topper that would match little boxes, little party favorite boxes or bags. But there was nothing like that on the market. And I just although I had the thought in my head, I didn't know how to put it out there. I didn't know how to create it. I didn't know where it was going to come from. And so it was many years later that I officially started doing what I do now. And it's been two years that I've been fully just doing paper. A friend of mine who is actually a baker, she said, I think you should just keep baking as a hobby and let paper be your thing because this is art. She actually hates that I call it party supplies because she's just like, it's so much more than that. She said, it's truly art and it's something that is needed. Um, uh, in the industry that is, especially in the local area, there aren't many people who do what I do 
uh, especially not at the level that I do it. Very nice, very nice. Um, so I said earlier that there's a pattern that's going on. Um, and so the pattern that I have seen with all of you tonight is that um, one, there was something significant that happened in your life that made you decide to um, start your businesses. I also heard that, you know, you have a niche or a gift or a talent that you can make money with. <laughs> and you found that you can build wealth and you can build stability and so forth, um, starting your businesses. And then the third thing I heard from pretty much everybody, or no, everybody, is you know being able to help others, especially other women, um, grow and build. Um, and that's that's really what it's all about. Um, for me, just if you are not enjoying what you're doing, being able to provide for your family, doing it, and then um, being able to give back in some way, shape, or form, um, then what are you really doing? That's just me personally. That's how I feel, and it sounds like all of you um, kind of share those same those same values. You know, helping others, building for your family, so forth and so on. So um, I am so proud of all of the ladies that are on tonight. We've gone over a little bit, but I don't want for us to end without um, giving some tips. So um, I'm going to start with uh, Miss Angela. Tell us what tips would you give other women that want to um, start their own brand or their own business? What is what's your what are some tips that you can give other women out there? I think one of the biggest tips. Um, this is something I teach. I've been teaching throughout the tour. Um, the six master keys to building your business. The master key number one is to repair your self image. Really see yourself succeeding in what you're doing see yourself as god to you see yourself killing the game see yourself bigger than your situation because a lot of times we are stuck because we deem not to be smart enough or educated enough or not pretty enough or not in the crowd so we see ourselves most of the time from the eyes of hurt from the eyes of people who have wronged us and abused us so for me, it's really repairing your self-image, how you see yourself. I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have people having conversations about starting businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, travel the world, speaking. I didn't hear people talking about dreams, pursue your purpose, and you can do anything. In my community, they were drinking, they were smoking, they were getting high, going to the club. So that's how I see myself. I didn't see myself as the woman who could have certified over 60 women. I didn't see myself as the world's number one math fight speaker training. I didn't see myself empowering women for them to walk in their greatness. I couldn't see that. All I seen was a broken little girl that was raped and molested, rejected by her father, and could not get it together while raising her children on welfare for 20 years. That's all I seen. But until I started working on how I see myself and how God created me, that's when things changed for me. And that was well a couple of years into me starting my business. So for me, it's repair how you see yourself, not the environment, not the situation, not what you can't pay, not what you drive, not where you live, not who you boot up with, not what's in your bank account, but who God created. And if you see something bigger than what God created, then you have to believe what God says about you. You have to believe what God placed on the inside of you and walking that thing unapologetically, regardless who don't support you, regardless who don't believe in you, regardless who don't see your vision, you have to see yourself bigger than what everybody else sees you and walking that thing powerfully, walking, igniting her fire, walking in all those things that you want to walk in, not others. That would be I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to just do a plug here for you, Miss Angela. Um, <laughs> you have a you have a book, uh, 12 Laws to Women in Leadership. So real quickly, tell us about that and where they can find it. Well, that book is not launched yet. It's still in the publishing process. Okay. That is Good. book number 12. <laughs> 
um, which okay. might be my sixth anthology. It will be launching. The goal is to launch it in November. Um, but you can always okay. go to the website at www.andrewbrandenterprise.com. Purchase that one. I just launched my first magazine as well, so I'm excited about that, the Her Fire magazine, and all the different collections that I have can be found on the website as well and on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Well, I'll, then we'll be looking forward to that. So we got to get you back <laughs> on to talk about your good, get it. Because I saw it when I went on your website the other day and I was like, oh, that looks good. That'd be perfect for the podcast. So um, make sure that y'all look out for that. Uh, the 12 laws to, um, to leadership on her yeah. um, on her website. And in that book, I talk, I talk about one of the chapters is how to lead from your feminine energy. A lot of women hustle, bustle, all these things, but they're not properly building. They've been exhausted. They just really work in their hobby. So I showed them how to build from their feminine energy. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, and turning turning your hobby into a profit. <laughs> um, if, if, that's, if that's your niche and that's, your, that's what you're doing. Um, okay, so Miss uh, Lucretia, give us give us a tip. Give us one tip for the, for the women out here that want to um, start their own brand around business. Uh, I, it's very much going to relate to what Angela said. It's definitely um, that self-development. Um, I went through the many stages um, trying to figure out who I was. And it's, it's, it's really knowing who you are. So I would definitely say I'm very, very big with teaching my, my ladies um, black, learning how to master blocking out the noise from life when i learned how to master blocking out the noise from life i could then you know really figure out who i was that's when a discipline starts that's when all the self-development begins um i don't think you can do anything you know not even business you know you can't even be the best mother you can to your children you can't be the best wife to your husband if you don't know who you are and um, how you functioning. I'm super big on self-development and discipline. Um, I, I highly encourage to, um, you, you got to know who you are. Always like to say, um, you got to figure out, you have to know who you are, know what you want, and know where you're going. I, I didn't know those three things, selling cupcakes for $5 out my car, right? I learned those three things along the way of my journey. So now I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I like to play the longevity game. I, I couldn't figure those things out in, um, with a struggling mindset, with a poverty mindset, right? You, you don't know who you are. So I think it's going to very much begin with the self-development. Self-development is everything else. Just God controls it. It goes how it's supposed to go. But if you don't know who you are, it's not going to work. You want to be all over the place because you want to be living someone else's life. You're not going to feel free, mentally free, until you first figure out who you are. And then I guess, you know, you you work on the freedom, the financially, right, and the physical. But um, that, that mindset thing, it goes really deep. You got to figure out who you are. Um, once you figure out who you are and you, I'm so confident in how I'm coming and I know I'm a viable player and I, I know who I am. I know what I want and I know where I'm going. Nobody can't take that away from you. Even if you have a business that you just started and you don't know what you're doing, nobody can take that away from you when you know those three things. Um, Self-development is it's everything. People think it's not. They, they, they worry about the money. Um, I'm going to always say self-development, figure out who you are, what you want, where you're going, um, master blocking out the, the distractions and the noise of life. Life is very loud. Life is built with so many distractions. Um, one last thing too, I always highly encourage is having a morning, a daily morning routine, tapping into you before we jumping into this very, very noisy life. I can't give anybody anything from me. I'm not looking at invoices, emails, the money or nothing until I get my prayers in and tap into me. I think that's where we fall short at a lot because everybody expects so much of us, right? And we're trying to do so much and make everybody so happy. Um, pouring back into self has been a game changer for me. And I teach this strategy um, to my ladies and, and it works. They love it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, self-care, making yourself a priority, um, knowing yourself and 
um, all of those, all of those, all of that is is definitely definitely key to um, to launching and to being a boss. <laughs> so yes, thank you for sharing that, um, Dr. Erica. Tell us one tip that she can tell our our ladies that are watching that might want to start their own business or their own brand. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> I keep doing that. <laughs> That's because I don't want to. I don't want to mess nobody up. I'm trying to be quiet because I want to hear everybody. <laughs> anyway, um, and like I always tell people, start with the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Those are the simplistic things that I believe we all were taught in school. Okay, it's a roadmap to where you need to be. And I always tell people, write it down, because when we write it down, we're able to look at it. it. We're able to understand it better. That's why any agreement that we do in life is always written. That's why the Bible is written. And this is why people send you stuff in writing, because therefore, once you read it, we all learn differently. OK, there's so many different learning styles that was in the doctorate program, but there's so many different learning styles. But basically, 80 percent of Americans learn through written when it's written that is their go-to place and so a lot of people as most of us have stated on this um podcast today a lot of people don't have a roadmap we go after what we see what we feel what we think what we can touch what we can smell that does not apply to business i want to be clear on that when you're starting a business none of those sensor sensory none of that matters it's the basic things in life. And if you discover and you write down your roadmap of those things, that's where you will have guidance. That's like when we put in the GPS. If it says, take us this way, that's the way we go. And then as we're going that way, we see the progress, but it may say, take a detour. It may say caution. It may say you may be delayed another 15 minutes, but guess what? You can still go back to the roadmap of the who, what, where, why, when, and how. That is a compass and it encompasses everything that we need to do and build the foundation for your business. People have, people start off a business and they learn as you go. That's not wisdom because you haven't built the foundation. So you need to build a foundation and those who are watching us right now and if they watch the replay, start with your foundation. It may take some time. So what if it's slow? Okay, I tell my students and agents all the time i would rather grow than swell okay so if you're watching this replay i want you to type in on mrs sunshine comments that you want to grow versus swell because we know what happens when you swell you eventually pop and then you have nothing left so the foundation going back again close out what i have to say the who what where when why and how is your firm concrete foundation. Those are all the basic principles and we use those in real estate as well. If you want to build a home, we've already discovered those things. So therefore now the home can stand alone and on its own because it's on the firm foundation. Don't look at what everyone else is doing because I promise you that a business, it takes at least two years to build a solid business. Okay. And you will see that most businesses won't last past two years because the foundation is not firm. So build it right the first time. And also follow someone that you know that is doing what you want to do and that they have receipts, as we call them. Okay, hashtag receipts. <laughs> okay, so you have to put that in the comments too. We want to see the receipts, the fruit of your labor. If you want to be a millionaire? I want to see some millionaire activity. I want to see some millionaire receipts. Whatever you got to show me. Because people talk a good game and they got a good gift of gab, but I promise you, they can't furnish. So you follow and you get a mentor who's doing exactly what it is that you want to do. And you will see how you will turn out e even greater than that mentor will be because of the because they have a firm foundation and they've given you the tools for you to take your business and your, your area of expertise to the next level. Yes, yes. Like it, receipt. I like that point. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Miss Tammy, um, what is one tip that you'll share with um, women that are watching that want to build their own brand or business? 
Um, my business is very service oriented and it goes back to when I was very young and my mother always taught me to treat others as I expected to be treated. And if there's anything I've learned in this business that I approach every one of my customers and I keep that mindset that if I were in their shoes, what type of service would they expect? What, what kind of service would I expect from them? So with every client that I have, I try to treat them as I would expect to be treated as well with respect, you know, to help them do whatever I possibly can to make myself available um, and just show that you care. I think that especially in the world that we're in now, just to show that you do have some compassion and that you care, that you truly care about helping these people get and accomplish what they want to, that I think it really stands out today. Yeah, I like that. That's a good principle to follow is to, to conduct business and treat people the way you want to be treated and the way the business that you would like um, if you were, if the roles were reversed. Excellent, excellent, excellent principle. Um, Ms. Jolie, can you share one tip that you would share with someone that wants to start their own business or brand? Um, I would say the biggest thing that helped me is first off, accepting who you are and where you are in your present state. Um, not looking at where someone else is. Um, I, it always takes me back. I like analogy. So it takes me to a freeway. Everyone is traveling on a freeway. Sometimes you have people traveling the same speed as you. You have some that are in the fast lane. They're going a little faster. You have some that are going a little slower. But then there are times when you are on the freeway by yourself and it is uncomfortable. That is the time to move in the uncomfortable. Don't worry about what's going on around you. If you're driving and you're worried about the person in the lane next to you and you swerve, you're gonna cause an accident. Keep your eyes on your own lane. Don't worry about how fast they're going. Don't even worry about your own pace. You're going at the pace you're supposed to go. And if, if anybody is like me, at some point I tried to move too fast and something didn't work for me. So I had to pump my brakes and make sure I got back in my lane and said, okay, what works for Jolie? What works for Miss Erica is not going to work for Jolie. We, we, are, we have two different lanes that we're in. So just accepting, hey, th these are the mistakes I've made. I'm going to learn from those mistakes. And here is where I am now. How do I move forward? That's my yes, 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 yes. No one is perfect except for God. So, um, no one's perfect and being able to accept your mistakes is a part of growth. So yes, thank you for, thank you for bringing that out. Thank you. Um, Ms. Claire Sean, one tip, one tip for um, ladies out here who would like to start their own business or brand. I would say that, or the tip that I would give is that the habits that you have in your personal life are going to carry over into your business life. So, you need to have boundaries, be disciplined, and be consistent. Yes, consistency is really important. Um, you can get burnt out really quickly. Um, I'm a social worker. Burnout is really big. Um, but also with with having your own business and trying to, you know, being your own boss and making your own income easy to get burned out so we've already talked about you know self-care and you know making yourself a priority um reinventing yourself treating other people the way that you want to be treated you know staying in your lane building that niche and your passion um excellent tips ladies and i am i'm i'm already i already have like follow-up episodes in my head that i want to do with each of, with y'all so i am so excited um that we were able to get together tonight um, you all are phenomenal. I'm so happy that you were able to join me tonight and to inspire other women that are listening. Of course, this message is not just for women. Um, it's for our young girls too. It's for our young men. It's for um, for for men. Um, this is not just for women. But 
I think it's really important that as women that we do um, build each other up and we, we help each other and we empower each other and we inspire each other. Um, and so it, it was really important for me to have an all woman panel to be able to do that because I think it's really important that we support one another as mothers, as sisters, as friends, however that we need to do. Um, and not to be so critical of one another, but to be there to, to help one another. So I really, really appreciate all of you coming on tonight. We did have one more thing, the juice of the week, but I'm not going to hold y'all any longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it and I'm going to tag y'all for y'all to give the feedback on the juice of the week. Um, and uh, I, will sh I will share some of your comments um, over the next couple of days. So look for that tag for me. Um, thank you for everyone that was watching. We had a great audience tonight. So thank you for watching. Um, this is the private room with Tiffany. I didn't say what I do. So otherwise, in the podcast, I'm also a social worker, um, finishing my, my master's to become a clinical mental health um, therapist. Um, I am also a, a, an advocate in the community. Um, I have my own uh, community organization, which was Butterfly Visions Project, which we have now rebranded to BBC Project Safe Haven that provides emergency shelter to domestic violence victims and their family. Um, I'm also an author as well. As many of you that are on the platform tonight, you can find my book on my website, tiffanylbrown.com or on Amazon. Um, and just, an, I'm just a person that just loves people um, and helping people. And that was one of the patterns that I heard tonight with all of you is wanting to be able to help um, your community to help people and especially other women out there. So again, thank you for giving us your time, ladies. I truly appreciate you. You will be hearing from me again, and hopefully um, we will be in contact consistently. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be reaching out because I'm going to be ready to buy a house here in the next couple of years <laughs> once I get to look at look so. <laughs> so thank you so much. Everyone have a great night. Please be true to yourselves. Be your authentic selves. Um, follow your passion. Get into that niche. Make some money. Boss up. And come back and tell us about it on the private room. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.